you know the heat index might be 110 degrees today down here but let me tell you something the fish are biting get out there so on today's video we're going to be covering exactly where to go catch you either a a trophy fish or b a boatload of fish for that summer fish fry what's going on guys i'm steven turner with turner fishing welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're looking for the best crappy fishing advice on youtube you found it so summer time crappy a lot of people don't even realize that that is even a thing you know they're like oh the crappy are spawning let me go throw this cork up shallow got me a limit all right i'm done for the year let's go catch some catfish and some bluegill but i'm here to tell you they bite 365 days of the year. You just gotta put yourself in the right position, right time of day, right sun gear, so you don't get out there and get sun cancer, and go catch you some. I wanna intersect this video for just, give me 30 seconds of your time. We've got two of these big boxes. Uh, I think there's 18 slots in here, and we've got four starter kits. These are going up for raffle. We do a raffle about every two months here at Crappy Man Jigs. Y'all know the drill, $10 for an entry fee. You can buy as many as you want. Every 10 entries, there's something else being added to this pool. So right now there's gonna be four and two to six winners right now. So for every 10, it goes seven, eight, nine, 10. I mean, it's maxed up. For every 10, I'm gonna be throwing in a hundred packs, a bunch of jig heads, painted jig heads, new colors, all the good stuff. Y'all know how we do, I love doing giveaways. CrappyManJigs.com, check it out. So, summertime crappy. Let's just take it, let's go wind back the clock real quick. We're coming out of the post spawn and we're coming into this, what I call the dog days of summer. You know, you gotta get up early or go out late if you wanna beat the sun. But me personally, you can fish sun up the sun down as long as you bring enough ice and enough water so you don't have a daggum heat stroke out there but they will bite at night, they will bite in the morning, they will bite in the middle of the day, they will bite at, at the end of the day. You just gotta put yourself in that position and be willing to do one key thing. The key thing about summertime fishing is if you get some bites and they stop, put your pole down and go find another brush pile, a dock a bridge and then come back you you want to play hopscotch with these fish there's only so many fish per school per brush pile that are actively willing to bite at that any given time during the day so if you pull up to a dock you find them on side scan you see them with live scope whatever you're using 2d whatever you catch a few you go 10 to 15 minutes without a bite Pull your trolling motor up and go to your next area. So what areas are we focusing in on this time of year? Like I said, we got an A, a trophy fish, a B, a boatload of fish. You know, there's, there's two different ways to fish during this time of year. So we're gonna start with A, the trophy fish. Now this is what I like to do because I mean, I've caught hundreds of thousands of crappie in my lifetime. So going to catch a limit isn't exactly the funnest thing in the world, but going to catch a pound and a half to two pound fish, it's still an, an adrenaline rush and I believe it always will be for the rest of my life. Catching a trophy fish. What's happening right now during this time of year? You've got two things going on shallow. You've got the shad spawn and the bluegill are spawning. These bigger crappy aren't dumb. They got big for some reason. And the, the reason is they're kind of like me. They know how to eat shatter up their spawning they got to stop spawning on that bank and come out to five to ten feet of water crappy are going to be sitting there waiting on them and they're going to gorge on them because there's only you know so many crappy shallow this time of year the majority of your fish are going to be deep but you got a shad spawn in the morning they're going to gorge on the shad all right now during the heat of the day you've got a bluegill spawn you've got a lot of fry coming from these bluegills your bluegills are making hundreds of thousands of fry i mean there's bluegill beds everywhere and those crappy are going to pull up and eat those bluegills uh, crappy are carnivores they're, they don't they don't give a crap they're, they're going to eat their fry bass fry striper fry catfish fry 
whatever will fit in their mouth, they will eat. So where do we find these areas? Bluegill beds, very simple to find if you have side scan. Uh, you put your side scan on 50 to 60 feet, get out in about 10 feet of water and follow that contour and look towards the bank on your screen. You'll see little in indications of bluegill beds. And once you find the bluegill beds, where are the crappie? You got to find the brush, the stumps, uh, any kind of structure that's near these bluegill beds that they're gonna pull back to, to hang out, rest up, uh, be protected from whatever thing that could eat them. But majority of the time, these fish are gonna be 14 plus inches and they're not really worried about something eating them. So in a shad spawn, you wanna look for a flat that the bank has a lot of bushes, uh, riprap, docks, uh, shallow docks, docks with poles in the ground, uh, riprap at bridges are really good for the shad spawn. I mean, if you get there really early, you can kind of see the shad and how they spawn is they just, they hit stuff and it makes the eggs come out their bellies, I guess, for lack of better terms. Uh, they'll go against dock pylons, rocks, uh, bushes, lay downs, and that's basically how they spawn. And they get up there until the sun gets high and then they push back out. And when they push back out, the crappy's sitting there waiting to eat them. And that's where your bigger fish are going to be, your 14 inch plus fish, you know, 12 inch fish too also. Now for the majority of people this time of year, they're going to be fishing a little bit deep. Now for the shallow fish, I don't know if I mentioned it, five to 10 feet of water. What do you need to be throwing this time of year? So recently I came out with a new color and it is called platinum. And basically this is a shad shad fry imitator and it's really just a chromed out glitter fest of a jig this is in the micro minnow uh, 1.2 inch but we do have them in the 2 inch and the 1.5 inch little minnow and the swim bait so my biggest recommendation for this time of year if you're fishing shallow if you're fishing a long pole like a 13 foot 12 foot pole use a little minnow 1.5 inch 164 ounce jig head and a weight and you know jig around these stumps with that but if you're casting the brush piles and stuff 100 percent recommend swim bait uh, the 1.5 inch paddle tail grub swim bait that we sell on crappymanjigs.com right here that is probably key and if they don't bite that they're gonna bite that little micro minnow because I mean, they're eating fry. 1.2 inch, come on now. Now for you guys fishing deeper, uh, let's kind of explain where you need to be looking. Docks, bridges, brush piles. Okay, I could say that a million times, but I still get comments, you know, where, where do I find this stuff? And it all boils down to is stop being lazy. You know, this, this is a no bullshit channel. If you don't put in the time to go out there and find brush piles, you're gonna struggle catching fish this time of year. You know, either find them, put them in yourself. I know I get some comments that, you know, their lakes don't allow them to put in brush piles, but a 10 foot John boat at two o'clock in the morning does a lot, of, a lot of damage. You didn't hear that from me though. But anyways, creek channels, follow your creek channels, look on your maps. You can buy a map at Walmart. You can find a map on your phone Look at your map and find areas where the creek channel, the river channel swings into a bank. Find docks on those, find brush piles on those. Bridges that have a creek or a river channel running under them, which I mean the majority of bridges do. Uh, the deeper the bridge, probably the more fish you're gonna find. The shallower the bridge, the bigger the fish you're gonna find, etc. But you gotta realize that this time of year, you've got to move. You know, I'm talking about these 12 to 16 inch fish up shallow. You're probably going to fish four or five hours for like four fish, but they're going to be huge. And that, that's just the name of the game. Now, for your deeper fish, you can limit out in 10 minutes if you, if you find the right school at the right time. But majority of the time, you're going to find your brush piles 10 to 25 feet of water. But you want that brush to have dots on top of it. Now, if you're not using electronics, I can't really 
pinpoint you where you need to be fishing this time of year because if you can't find the deeper structure you're probably not going to find any fish so if you're bank fishing i mean unless you have access to get to a bridge or have a fishing dock with a brush pile that's out deeper you're probably sol i mean crappy you know 80 percent of them are going to be deep and then you got 20 percent up shallow in my opinion so for your deeper stuff creek channels river channels idle through these it takes hours to break down the sections of lake to find these brush piles mark these brush piles check these brush piles uh, for your docks you want to side scan them you want to 2d down the front of them you know dock owners put brush out in front of their docks if it's a good dock <laughs> it's just really a lot of time to find these areas which i know is hot so you don't want to be sitting still for long so i mean idling around kind of helps out but well, if you get too hot this summer find some bridges go to a bridge get up under the shade you know there's going to be crappy somewhere on that bridge i can guarantee you but how do you catch these deeper fish and we've got another new color uh come out my buddy cleveland you know he's been a channel member for a long long time and he loves fishing pink deep and I never understood it until I tried it myself a couple weeks ago. And the, it, it seems like the deeper the brush, the more they like pink. So I made what I call bubble yarn. It's a pink, uh, a pink, a fluorescent pink on top and a pearl bottom. And it's killer for deep water brush piles. Now I'm pairing that up. That is a two inch OG. I'm pairing that up with a 124 ounce jig head with a size four hook. And if I'm using a live scope, I'm going to put a little bitty split shot above it just so I can find it on the screen better. But if I'm just fishing, I'm just going to fish it as a 124, you know, in that 15 to 25 feet range. Anything lower than that, I'm always throwing a 164. I mean, majority, 95% of the time I'm throwing a 164, no matter how deep I'm fishing. But if it gets to that point where I know the fish are deep, I do want something a little bit faster to go through there. Four, four pound test, high vis, vicious line, uh, six six uh, rod. It don't really matter which rod you got. It don't really matter which reel you got. Just something you're comfortable with. I mean, I'm not sponsored by any rod. I can catch them on a stick as long as I can feel that line with my finger. But <coughs> excuse me. But finding these key areas, taking the time to idle through and like i said if you don't have electronics fish docks that's about the only way fish docks and bridges if you don't have electronics i mean if you go bass fishing you can beat the banks and catch bass if you go crappy fishing you can't really do that this time of year if you don't have anything to reference what you're fishing it gets really really tough so just having a, a i mean you can get a hummingbird piranha max at walmart for like 120 bucks which i know that's a lot of money especially you know even even for me that's a lot of money so get what you can get i mean they they even make something that connects to your phone you just cast out there just you got to do what you got to do to find some kind of structure something that you could throw a marker buoy on and catch them so these deeper brush another surefire way to catch these fish i don't want to leave this out in the video you know i am a uh, a jig 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 company owner so obviously i want you to buy some of my jigs but at the same time a slip court with a minnow deep brush piles it don't get no better than that so hopefully i steer you in the right direction this time of year get out there catch you some fish fill your boat up have you a nice family fish fry and i'm gonna catch y'all on the next video